Assalamualaikum and very good day. I'm Dr. Hidayah from the School of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. First, I would like to welcome everyone to my lecture video. This video is for online learning for the course of Highway Engineering. In this video, I will discuss on exercise of flexible pavement thickness, how to design the pavement thickness. So stay with me. I hope this video will benefit you and others. For those who are my student, you can refer to chapter 4 under the topic of structural design of flexible pavement. Then go to problem 4.7 in your notes. Before we discuss in details of the exercise 4.7, let's have a look on the work example of ATJ 5-85 method or Arahan Teknik Jalan 5-85. From the question, you are required to determine the thickness for a JKR road based on the given data. So from here, we can see we're going to design for a road with carriageway width 7.5 meter, which describe to us the size of two lane highway, and then shoulder width of two meter, ADT or average daily traffic for both ways, 6,600. So remember, we are actually designed the road per direction and the IDT is given for both ways and then the percentage of commercial vehicles is 15 percent okay because the given IDT is based on the total traffic volume it's not only commercial vehicle but remember for our design we only consider for commercial vehicle for Malaysian design we consider the commercial vehicle of 1.5 tons and above and then traffic growth rate every year 7%. Subgrid strength of CBR value given is 5%. And then the terrain factor is rolling. For this work example, the layer materials proposed for the design for the surface layer of binder cost and wearing cost is asphalted concrete or asphalt mixture. And then road base, wet mix macadam. For sub base is sand. Before we go into the details calculation to the thickness design, let's define what exactly lane, carriageway and direction. We have to be clear of this kind of term because it's involved in the design. Depends on our selection for the proposed road. Okay, from the slide, you can see the sketch of two lane highway and four lane highway. So for two lane highway, the term used is that one lane per direction so whenever you mention a two lane highway meaning that you are referring to the total lane for both directions and then for four lane highway which describe that two lane per direction or four lane for both ways normally in our design if we consider the directional split in most design the directional split is assumed 50% and 50%, which means from the 100% of total traffic volume, 50% in each direction. And then, what is carriageway? From this slide, you can see the illustration of carriageway and lane. The first illustration shows the single carriageway with two lanes. And then the second illustration and the image shows the single carriageway but with four lanes. So two lanes per direction. And then the final illustration shows the dual carriageway with the median. Also four lane with two lane per direction. So basically, carriageway we can say as a road with a dividing strip between the traffic in opposite direction and usually two or more lanes in each direction. Okay, now let's have a look on the detailed solution for the problem. Let's do it step by step. First, you have to calculate the initial annual commercial traffic for one way. So in here, 6,600 is based on the total traffic volume. And now we have to consider only for commercial vehicle in one direction. So we assume as half or 50% per direction for the ADT. Then, Calculate the commercial traffic for the design period. So in this case, we design it for 10 years. And the cumulative commercial traffic for the design period of 10 years is 
2.5 million. And then next, we need to determine the equivalent standard ISIL. If you still remember, in the previous lecture, we have to convert total traffic volume considered in the design into equivalent standard axle load. So we need to multiply the total traffic volume of 2.5 million with the load equivalency factor. So in this case, we refer to table 4.1. And then based on the table of 15% commercial vehicle, the load equivalency factor is 2 for the trunk type. And then we need to determine the total thickness from the normal graph. Let's have a look on the normal graph. So before we use the normal graph to determine the thickness, you need to have the equivalent standard axle load, which is now 5 million, and then the CBR value of 5% as given from the question. So if you can see from the normal graph, you have four columns with values. So the first column, A, refers to the value of subgrade strength or CBR value. And then second column is the equivalent axle load. And the third column is the equivalent thickness, TA. And finally, the fourth column is the corrected equivalent thickness, TA prime. So our target is the value of TA prime. Let's do it step by step. Starting with the first column, first you have to mark 3% CBR. That's the rule. You have to start with the 3% CBR. And then what you need to do is to mark the 5 million in the second column. Then using these two points, you have to connect the two points with a straight line. And then that straight line cross the third column. And then you have to mark the cross point as reference. Then using the 5% CBR value, mark the 5% in the first column and then connect the points between the 5% and the cross point of the third column. And then the straight line between these two points should be extend to the fourth column of the corrected equivalent thickness. So now the value that we've got for the TA prime of this work example is 26 cm. It should be noted that this value represent the total thickness of the pavement. So next we have to determine the thickness of each layer, which consists of sub-base, work base, binder cost, and wearing cost. Here you can refer to the question given in your notes of TA prime, equivalent to SN or structural number. A refer to the structural coefficient as shown in table 4.5, and then D refer to the thickness of each layer as shown in table 4.6. So based on table 4.5, our material just now is for wearing and binder cost is asphaltic concrete, where the coefficient for this material is 1. And then for the road base layer, the proposed material is wet mixed macadam. So under the category of crush aggregate with the coefficient of 0 0.32. And then for the sub base layer, the proposed material is sand with the coefficient of 0.23. Next, refer to table 4.6. Table 4.6 gives us the standard thickness of the pavement layers. So based on the standard thickness for wearing cost layer, the standard thickness is between 4 to 5 cm. And then for binder cost, between 5 to 10 cm. For road base wet mixed macadam, the thickness between 10 to 20 cm. And for the sub base of granular material, the standard thickness is between 10 to 30 cm. And then you have to refer to table 4.7 on minimum thickness of bituminous layer. This is actually referred to the combination between binder cost and wearing cost. So based on the normal graph, we've got TA prime equals to 26 cm. Therefore, the total thickness of bituminous layer based on this table should be minimum of 15 cm. Detailed selection of the material coefficient and minimum thickness for the different layers can be referred to this table. Okay, let's do the first trial. So for the first trial, based on the work example, the nomination of D1, which refers to the thickness of asphaltic concrete that covers the binder cost and wearing cost is 12.5 cm. And then D2 for the road base layer is 18 cm and D3 for the sand of the sub-base layer is 20 cm. So using the value selected, now we have to use the equation of SN 
and then calculate the total. So in this case, for the first trial, Sn equals to 22.86. So it seems like the value less than the target Ta prime. That's why we have to adjust the thickness for the second trial and then recalculate the Sn. But this time, we have to increase the thickness so that we can achieve the Ta value. So let's have a look on the second trial. So for the second trial, D1 is nominated for 15 cm, D2 20 cm, and D3 is 20 cm. And finally, we've got the value of Sn is 26 cm, which is equal to the target Ta prime. So now, meaning that the thickness proposed can be accepted. Okay, let's compare why the first trial doesn't achieve the target Ta prime. Looking back at the previous table 4.7. When Ta prime 26, the selection of the total thickness for the bituminous layer should be 15 cm minimum. So that's why in the first trial, we can't achieve the target total thickness because the trial only consider 12.5 cm. And finally, don't forget to sketch each of the layers with the selected thickness. For the binder cost and wearing cost, the 15% is split with 5 cm for the wearing cost and 10 cm for the binder cost as recommended in table 4.6. If the value of the total for wearing cost and binder cost more than 15%, meaning that we have to provide multi-layer for the asphaltic concrete, then we have to use the standard of one layer lift as shown in the table. So what is the final value for the design layers? From the design, wearing cost 5 cm, binder cost 10 cm, road base 20 cm, and finally sub base 20 cm. Okay, before we use the design values, we have to check whether the design is still comply with the estimated traffic volume for 10 years. First, we have to estimate the daily traffic per direction per lane after 10 years. Calculate the total one-way traffic at the end of 10 years. You can use the formula as shown in the slide. So using the formula, the value that we've got at the end of 10 years based on the estimation is 6492. Next, we have to calculate the daily traffic per direction per lane after 10 years based on the design capacity. First, calculate the maximum hourly one-way traffic flow using the C formula. So C equals to I multiply with R and multiply with T. The value of I, R and T can be referred to tables 4.2, 4.3 and 4.4. Okay, let's have a look on the first table of 4.2. This is to determine the I value, its maximum hourly capacity under ideal condition. From the work example, the road is proposed for two lane for both ways. So according to table 4.2, two lane both ways, the vehicle unit per hour is 2000. Therefore, in order to consider only per direction, then the 2000 is divided by 2. Next is for the R value, its carriageway road width reduction factor. From the question, the carriageway width is 7.5 meter and then shoulder width is 2 meter. Therefore, the R value based on table 4.3 is 1. Next, we have a look on table 4.4 on traffic reduction factor T. In this example, the type of terrain is rolling. So using the formula given in the table, you just include PC, it's 15%. And the T value is 0 0.77. So back to the previous slide, C equals to 1000 multiplied with 1 and multiplied with 0 0.77. So the C value is 770 vehicle per hour per lane. So to compare with the estimation value, we have to calculate the daily traffic. And now step 3, we need to calculate the maximum daily capacity per lane per direction based on the design. So now, value of 770 vehicle per hour is multiplied with 10 hours. So this 10 hours is actually the consideration made on the operation daily time for the traffic. 
So from the slide, as you can see, when we compare the value of estimation and design, the capacity have not been reached after 10 years. Therefore, the design is considered acceptable. Next, let's have a look on the exercise 4.7. Refer to question 4.7.1. So first, you have to calculate the equivalent standard axle load for this vehicle with various axle load. And then for 4.7.2, you need to determine the mean CBR value for this particular subgrade given for 1 meter with different CBR value. Okay, let's have a look on question 4.7.1. A, for 2 axle truck with BG1 or axle load 1 is 6,000 kg and axle load 2 is 10,000 kg. Based on the previous lecture, the standard load for single axle is 8,160 kg or 80 kN. So how this standard axle looks like? So from the slide, you can see single axle with single tires and then single axle with dual tires or its standard axle and then the tandem axle with single tires and finally the tandem axle with dual tires. So how to calculate the equivalent standard axle load or E? The formula is by taking the ratio between the axle load to the standard axle as given by the formula. So you can calculate the equivalent standard axle based on the formula proposed by ATG5-85 or road note 31 method. The difference between the formulas of both methods is based on the N value. It's whether to use 4 for ATG5-85 or 4.5 considered for road note 31. So based on the calculation of the equivalent standard as a load or E for ATG5-85, the value is 2.55 and for road note 31 method 2.75 next you can try for other vehicles b for a three axle truck and c for trailer with more number of axle this slide compares different types of vehicle with different easel Looking at the easel value, that's why we don't consider car in the design because the value is very small, which describes that the car imposes less damage to the pavement surface. Next, we have a look on question 4.7.2. Determine the mean CBR value for the subgrade given for 1 meter. Using the formula given, the mean CBR value is 15%. Next question. 4.7.3, it's about axle load study. The given data is axle load range in tonne, number of axle, and number of commercial vehicle. First, let's have a look on how to calculate average number of axle per commercial vehicle. Total all the number of axle and then divided by total commercial vehicle. And then next, how to calculate total equivalent standard axle for that particular day. Using the formula, choose the average axle load from the range given and then divided by the standard axle, multiply with the number of axle for the given range. Next, calculate the average number of standard axle per commercial vehicle. And finally, the average number of standard axle per commercial axle. Okay, next, let's have a look on question 4.7.4. Design a pavement for a two-lane rural road to carry 250 vehicles per direction per day with percentage of commercial vehicle of 55%, the traffic growth rate of 5%, and subgrade CBR of 10% using Road Note 31 method. Okay, based on the previous lecture, Road Note 31 method used tables of catalog to determine the pavement thickness. Based on previous lecture, in order to determine the pavement thickness design based on road note 31, you need to know two main parameters. First is the subgrade class and then second is the traffic classes based on axle. Okay, let's do the design process. First step, you have to calculate the initial annual commercial vehicle for one direction or V node. 
the formula used is similar to ATJ5 through 85 that we have discussed before. So here the average daily traffic given is 250 and then the percentage of commercial vehicle is 55% and then for this case the average daily traffic is given per direction so you don't have to split by 50% again in the traffic volume. That's why it's considered as 1. So the initial annual commercial vehicle for one direction is about 50,000 and then calculate the total number for commercial vehicle for the design period in one direction. So in this case, it's considered for 10 years. So for 10 years estimation, the total number of commercial vehicle is about 630,000. And then we have to convert the total traffic volume into excel load. As referred to table 4.1 for equivalent factor, so E value is selected at 3.7 based on the percentage of commercial vehicle of 55%. So finally, we can get the value of equivalent standard Excel of 2.3 million. Then, next step, we need to determine the traffic and subgrade classes based on table 4.20 and table 4.21 as referred in your notes. So refer to table 4.20 based on the traffic classes the total equivalent standard exit load is equivalent to T4 between the range of 1.5 to 3 million. And then next, for the subgrade strength, the class is S4 based on the range of the CBR value between 8 to 14 percent. Then by having the T4 and S4, we need to use the catalog to determine the pavement thickness. This is the catalog used to determine the pavement thickness based on the method of road note 31. Based on the table, we've got T4 for the traffic classes and then S4 for the subgrade class. Therefore, as you can see from the table or catalog, the proposed thickness layer is double surface dressing on top and then 20 cm for the road base and 20 cm for the granular sub base. Okay, next we have a look on problem 4.7.5. Using road note 31 approach, determine the required pavement thickness if the design cumulative standard axle is 12 million, subgrade having plasticity index of 20, and then water table 2 meters below formation. To solve this problem, again, the traffic classes is referred to table 4.20 with the traffic class is T7. And then in this case, we don't have any value for CBR strength. So we need to refer to table 4.22. By having the depth of water table from a formation of 2 meter and then the plasticity index of 20, the classification of subgrade strength is S4. Then refer to the catalog for T7 and S4. So based on the sketch here, the thickness layer proposed for bituminous surface is 1 to 5 millimeter and then granular road base is 2 to 5 mm and finally the granular sub base is 175 mm. Okay, next we have a look on problem 4.7.6. Based on the given details, design the pavement thickness using Arahan Technic Jalan, ATJ 5 through 85, and Road Note 31 methods. The data given is the average commercial vehicle per day per direction in 2016 is 1,600, which is 30% of the total traffic per day per direction. And then traffic growth per year, 6%. Design life proposed is for 10 years. The thickness and CBR value are given for 1 meter. And the project is expected to complete and open for traffic in 2019. So compare both methods and give your comments. As referred to the slide, I have provided extra information on the assumption that you need to use for ATJ 5 through 85. Okay, let's have a look on the method of ATJ 5 through 85. First, we have to estimate the daily traffic per direction per lane in 2019 based on the data given in 2016. So we've got 1900 vehicle. Okay, next calculate the initial annual commercial vehicle for one direction in 2019. So no need to 
include the directional split and no need to multiply with the percentage of commercial vehicle because the ADT itself is given in commercial vehicle and for one direction. So from the calculation, we've got almost 700,000. Next, we have to estimate the total number for commercial vehicles for the design period of 10 years. So based on the estimation, the total commercial vehicle is 9 million. And then next, calculate the total cumulative equivalent standard axle load for that number of vehicle. So first, you have to refer to table 4.1 to select the load equivalency factor. So in this case, it's 3. Okay, by having that load equivalency factor, the value of ESA is 27 million. And then as referred to the question, the CBR value is given for 1 meter. So using the equation provided in the slide, we can calculate the CBR value. And in this case, the CBR value is 7.7%. Okay, next, use the nomograph to find the TA prime or total thickness of the pavement. So from the nomograph, use the easel of 27 million and CBR value of 7.7%. And finally, the corrected TA is 30 cm. Okay, next we need to determine the thickness of each layer. So using the equation of SN, structural number, determine the thickness of the different layers. For the structural coefficient, we can refer to table 4.5. And for the thickness of each layer, that can be referred in table 4.6. Okay, now refer to table 4.5. Based on the question, we assume that for the binder cost and wearing cost, the material is asphaltic concrete with the coefficient of 1. And then for the road base, is a crush aggregate with the coefficient of 0.32. And for the sub base, we assume that the material is sand with the coefficient of 0.23. Okay, as referred to table 4.6, those highlighted in yellow is the potential standard thickness for the trial. To be exact, the asphalt mixture for wearing cost, binder cost, and wet mix macadam for the road base, and granular material for the sub base. And then next, as referred to table 4.7, the minimum thickness of bituminous layer with the TA prime more than 30 cm should be more than 17.5 cm. So next, calculate the thickness of each layer. So the minimum thickness of each layer is given in the table. For the first trial, we assume that D1 is 18 cm and D2 20 cm and D3 25 cm. So based on the calculation of SN, we manage to achieve the minimum of 30 cm. So the design thickness is considered acceptable. And then, don't forget to sketch the thickness of each layer. So for the surface layer, the wearing cost is 5 cm. And then binder cost is 13 cm. Root base 20 cm. And finally, the sub base 25 cm. Okay, next we have to compare with the method of road note 31. So basically, the calculation of ESA is similar to what we have done for ATJ 5-85. So from the calculation, the ESA value is 27 million, which under T8 traffic class. And then the subgrade CBR is 7.7%, which is classified as S3. And then using this value, refer to the catalog under road note 31 as in figure 4.15. For T8 and S3, we've got 150 mm for bituminous surface and then 250 mm for the granular road base and 275 for granular sub base okay that's all for now thank you very much for listening see you in the next video assalamualaikum